Hi, my name is Oktay. Welcome to today's video about the new LK99 superconductor. This is a nice picture of the Meissner Ochsenfeld effect. It happens if you cool down a superconductor to below the critical temperature. Then you get this effect a uh, uh, magnet is uh, floating over the superconductor. This is the explanation of the Meissner Ochsenfeld effect. Um, at the left, that's the temperature above the critical temperature. At the right, that's the situation uh, at the temperature below the critical temperature. The Meissner Ochsenfeld effect is an expulsion of a magnetic field of a superconducting material. This effect was discovered by Walter Meissner and Robert Ochsenfeld in the year 1933. This is the BCS theory, that's the bardeen cooper schrieffer theory of superconductivity. For this theory, the Nobel Prize in Physics was given to John Bardeen, Leon Cooper and John Robert Schrieffer in the year 1972. You can see the, in red uh, the two electron, electrons, they make a Cooper pair. They are bound by phonon. A phonon is a quantized sound wave. And superconductivity is a phenomenon of at uh, low temperatures. Uh, this pair of um, Cooper, Cooper pair of electrons uh, can travel to, through the structure without loss of energy. However, the BCS theory uh, did not predict the high temperature superconductors, and this phenomenon is still not 100% uh, understood. This is a timeline of timeline of all the different superconducting materials, uh, year of the discovery at, at x-axis and uh, critical temperature at the y-axis. The first uh, superconducting material was mercury, it was uh, found in the early 20th century. And you can see um, all kinds of uh, compounds could, can be superconducting materials, for example some elements, some alloys. Here are the fullerides, these are the ions of the fullerene football molecule. And in the 80s, uh, there was another um, breakthrough, that's these uh, cuprate uh, superconductors. The uh, critical temperature is above the boiling point of liquid nitrogen, which is at 77 Kelvin or minus 196 degrees Celsius. For example, here we got uh, BISCO, that's uh, bismuth, strontium, calcium, copper oxide. And other uh, materials can also be superconductors. Here at the top right, uh, these are hydrides, for example, hydrogen sulfide or LAH10. These materials uh, can become superconductors, but only at high pressures. And uh, what you want to have is a superconductor uh, which are with a critical temperature that is above the room temperature, which is here. This is LK99. It was found by Zukpa Lee, Ji Hoon Kim, and Jung Wan Kwon. This material was discovered in the year 1999, that's why it's called LK99. LK, the letters come from the last names of the scientists. And recently there was a new article um, about the superconducting properties of this material. Uh, this compound is a modified uh, lead apatite. Apatites are a variants of hydroxyapatite, the same, same class of materials. Hydroxyapatite is the mineral in the bones and teeth. This is the formula of LK99, that's a lead copper phosphate oxide. X is important in this formula and you get a superconductor only if this uh, X is between uh, 0 0.9 to 1.1. So about one-tenth of the lead ions uh, are replaced by copper ions. It's a non-stoichiometric compound. Its critical temperature is, according to these scientists, uh, above 127 degrees Celsius. And this makes it unique. And you can see by the formula, these uh, elements are all uh, quite uh, cheap. That's another very big advantage of the LK99. 
Yeah, what's special is about, about this material is, according to the scientists, it, it is not confirmed yet by other scientists. LK99 is believed to be a superconductor at room temperature and ambient pressure at one bar. That's what's special. This is the structure of LK99. Uh, it is a modified lead appetite. The modification comes from the copper ions. They are essential. Uh, there are two columns of uh, lead ions, an uh, outer column in black and an inner column in uh, gray. Between these columns, uh, there are the phosphate ions. And uh, by replacing some of the lead ions by co uh, copper ions, we had a volume reduction by just 0.48%, and that gives this material its superconducting uh, properties. Uh, this is how it works. Um, lead ions are partially replaced by copper ions. This causes a shrinkage because um, copper ions with, eight, with the size of 87 picometers are smaller than the lead ions. Um, they are 133 picometer big. One picometer is one, 10 to the minus 12 meters. This partial substitution causes a stress on this uh, material and the volume shrinkage. This produces quantum wells and this gives this material a superconductor properties. This is a nice picture of the LK99 sample at the top, floating over a magnet at room temperature at one bar. And this is, it looks like the Meissner Oxenfeld effect. However, it is not 100% clear if this is uh, superconductivity or just uh, diamagnetism. Uh, this is a uh, lanarkite, which is a uh, lead sulfate oxide. It's a mineral from South Lanarkshire in Scotland. Lanarkite is one of two uh, components uh, that are needed for the synthesis of LK99. This is how the synthesis works. Um, first, you make lanarkite at 725 degrees Celsius in 24 hours uh, by heating a mixture of lead oxide and uh, lead sulfate. Then you get uh, lead sulfate oxide. Second step is a synthesis of uh, copper phosphide from the elements at 550 degrees Celsius in 48 hours. The third step is the synthesis of AK99 from uh, lanarkite plus copper phosphide plus oxygen. This is a complex redox reaction. It is um, made in a vacuum tube at 925 degrees Celsius in 5 to 20 hours. Then you get LK99 with this uh, formula. And byproduct is uh, sulfur. Uh, these are two important uh, potential applications uh, for LK99. You could uh, make wires from this material. You could use it for magnetic resonance imaging, MRI. This is very important for diagnosis of uh, diseases like, uh, for example, cancer. At the left, uh, this is a movie of uh, beating heart. And at the right, uh, these are the layers of the you know, human brain. And uh, these images are very important to locate uh, cancer's uh, tumors. And that's the first step in the uh, treatment of cancer diagnosis. There's another uh, use uh, for high temperature superconductors, a particle accelerator like the uh, one at uh, CERN in Geneva. Uh, this makes this machine much uh, simpler because you don't uh, need um, liquid nitrogen anymore for cooling. And uh, this material LK99 could also be very interesting for fusion reactors. This is another application for superconducting materials at room temperature. That's for electric power transmission. Uh, this is a picture of the maglev train in Shanghai. It's a very impressive train. Uh, makes the route um, 30 km length in 7 to 8 minutes. Uh, it can reach a maximum speed of 430 km per hour. And that's another application for superconducting uh, materials. I'm a big fan of science. Uh, I love science. And uh, if you're a young person and you're thinking about becoming a scientist, I can give you this uh, three advice tips. Uh, first is uh, follow your heart. You can't uh, predict or calculate anything, everything. Um, 
There are too many parameters in life, and um, sometimes it's uh, best uh, to do what your feeling uh, tells you to do. Second, um, this is very important. Uh, uh, scientists um, will have many failures, but this is a part of the job because you are exploring uh, unknown territory. That's normal that uh, most of your experiments will not work. And you could, uh, should uh, not uh, get frustrated over this. Third is, of course, never give up. Give up. Uh, try again and again. Try to modify your concepts and uh, try again. And I can give you an example. Um, last two of my seven years at the university, I was working on the, my PhD. Uh, but I had a one and a half year series of failed experiments. And this little modification, uh, replacing sodium, in Germany called natrium, uh, with lithium, uh, gave me my PhD because I was able to make over 20 new compounds within four months. And uh, this little change uh, made uh, all the difference to me. Uh, my favorite we uh, science website is uh, science.news. You can check it out if you're interested. Um, I will also um, post material in the description field and of this video if you're interested in more about LK99. And that was today's video. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.